This is the kissing gate of St Kyneburgers Church here in the village of Caster in Cambridgeshire. And it's one of the most beautiful medieval churches in England. And yet it's what's under this church's graveyard that's got our archaeologists very excited because beneath my feet could be the remains of a mysterious Roman building. But it's not just one Roman building by itself. Over there in the school playing field, across there in the rectory. In fact, everywhere I look, archaeologists have found impressive Roman structures. This could add up to be something very special. Looks like it's going to be a hectic three days. That is, if I can never get down again. Is that Roman? <laughs> Already, pieces of Roman mosaic flooring called tessera are turning up. Back outside, it's now raining cats and dogs on our archaeologists in Trench One. <laughs> Thank you so much. But despite the weather and the geophys results, this trench is turning into something of a gold mine. We got some finds for. We're getting loads of finds out already. This is just a selection. There's this stuff, which is kind of Saxo-Norman, dates the 11th, early 12th century, around about the time the church was built. So they were quite possibly robbing out the Roman buildings for stone to build the church. And we've got our first bit of early Middle Saxon handmade pottery, five, six, seven centuries, something like that. What about this chunky stuff here? Well, we've got Roman as well. There's some bits of Roman colour-coated pottery, which is late third, fourth. Bit of a mosaic tessera as well, possibly. Cracking selection of finds already. It looks like there's something coming out of the trench, Phil. Yeah, but this is the crucial thing, Tony. As Paul says, we are beginning to get Saxon pottery. These are the first levels that we're actually coming down onto. They could include Saxon buildings here. This is really rather extraordinary for us. We always have a problem finding Saxon on time team. To find it, great, but then to find it on the site where we're looking for Roman is a little bit more difficult. What do we find next? So we're going to open our second trench here in the old rectory garden. And after some promising geophys, we've decided to put a third trench in this corner of the school field. This is another spot that our antiquarian artists and later archaeologists have explored. And it seems to have been an artist's favourite, because he drew the remains of this impressive Roman bathhouse he reckoned he'd found here. If so, our trench in the old rectory garden could be right on top of one. But if Artis's plan is accurate, it's the north graveyard where we really need to focus our efforts. So Jim is now geophysing here. And by mid-afternoon, he's latched onto something. Um, you've turned up just at the right time. Look at this. We've got a really strong reflector here and it's at least five metres across. Well, that's nothing like anything else in the churchyard, is it? No, no, up until now, I mean, there's been the odd reflection, but they've looked like um, they could just be stone casket or a slab-lined grave. But, I mean, this is much, much bigger, and it's about halfway up the slope, just beyond where this mess is. Well, this is where the one building was meant to be from antiquarian records, where they got this early mosaic. It's possible Jim has detected this striking Roman yeah. mosaic floor that artists drew in his book of illustrations. And if our antiquarian site plan is to be trusted, it makes sense that geophys are getting a strong signal here. There must have been something here for them to rob and raid to use. Yeah. What are yeah. you guys doing here, all the excitement, on the far side of the church? You're stuck round the back. Yeah, but we've been looking at all the Roman stuff built into the church, the tile and the stonework and so on, and the idea that it comes from a huge Roman building that's somewhere round here, the back of the church. Artists had a theory that all the Roman buildings to the north of the church were one giant structure. And Stephen thinks this is how it might have looked. Well, it's a pretty enormous building, Tony. I mean, from where we're standing to the far side, it's 110 metres. Crikey. Well, if it's that big, it would absolutely dwarf the church, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. It would be three or two or three times bigger than the church. So what could something that size actually be? Let's go back to Artis. He called it a praetorium. What's a praetorium? Well, in artists' terms, he were used to digging villas of fairly modest size, and this was the biggest thing that he ever saw and ever dug. And he gave the term praetorium, implying its size. We've only got one day, Ben. Yeah. What do you think our overall strategy should be? Well, I think Artis was a very good archaeologist for his time, but I'm, I'm not so confident about this sort of floating building here. Yeah, Is yeah. it attached to the other buildings around it? What 
alignment is it on? We need a trench across there to try and yeah. tie it to the other buildings and sort out the alignment. Yeah. Then I think we need to do something similar in the west part of the churchyard, just here. Now, a few That's years where you can see that wall in the path. Yeah. Well, yeah. a few years ago, I cleaned up a bit of wall there, and there's definitely something there, but I didn't yeah. get much of a look at no. it. Is that a big building range, as artist depicts it? And I'm off up there now. <laughs> so Phil's on the move to this spot just north of the church to help Jackie dig a new trench in the graveyard. And Rakshar's opening a trench as well in the area that Ben's interested in. With over 20,000 burials in this churchyard, it's not going to be easy finding any evidence for our praetorium. But in the rectory garden trench, which Faye's now taken over from Matt, we may be onto something. What have you actually got going on over there, Tim? Well, I seem to have this surface. It's got a few tesserae in it, but it's very pebbly and not very good. Now, that's what's interesting, because where I am, I've got nothing. I've got a great big rectangular hole with no archaeology in it, and my only explanation for that can be that this is where Artis shoved his trench, and he basically took everything away with him. And therefore, that's why we've got this line along here, which I think is a robbed out wall. Everywhere on this site, we seem to be following in the footsteps of this chap, Artis. Some of us, quite literally. I need some measurements from this line now so I can put them on the drawing. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, beg your pardon. You're on time, Matthew. How? I think the peg's come out. Who put the peg in, Matthew? Sorry, sir, it went up and again. That's your wages, Dot. Yes, Mr Ainsworth. Right, next, the rectory garden next, Matthew. Anything you say, Mr Ainsworth? <laughs> Back in the graveyard, Phil and Jackie are up against the clock, digging carefully around lots of human bones. They've now only a few hours left to get down to the floor of a potentially massive Roman structure. Are these individual burials or are they lots of bones on top of each other? Well, we've, we've had a lot of loose bones spread about, turning up all the way across here. But the difference here is, you can see we've got about five skulls all dumped in together in one place. So you do think that that could be a grave digger who's cleared earlier graves, dug a pit, chucked these in so that more people can be buried? Yeah, I mean, basically, it looks like a charnel pit. But we do have a problem, don't we, that we've got lots of bones and lots of smashed mosaic, but no structures whatsoever. What we can be certain of is that in places, the grave diggers have been through the Roman floor. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this sort of material. What we've got to hope is that they didn't destroy it all and that they've left some of it for us. And that means digging deeper? That means digging deeper. Thankfully, Rakshar's trench at the western end of the graveyard looks to have got something more substantial. Oh, How's it going? It's going very well, actually. Um, put this trench in here to find what we thought was a wall coming through yeah. there. And uh, lo and behold, we have a huge wall. <laughs> that was actually poking out of the ground before was, you started, wasn't it? It was, we it? knew that was there, <laughs> but I didn't realise how massive it actually is. So we've got one wall here, mm -hmm. which is in running in that direction. And then where John is, we have the return, and that's running in this direction. So they should actually come out and converge around about here. It's amazing, isn't it? This is the first time that we have seen anything like the kind of monumental walls that Edmund Artis saw. Yeah, this is the, this is the only trench where we actually have huge walls. Mm, mm. In the old rectory garden, where we're looking for what could be the east wing of our praetorium, we now have two trenches. But our main hopes lie with these trenches in the graveyard. Rakshars at the western edge, and Phil's just north of the church. Phil, you know how I said I was getting a lot more building material and big blocks of tessera? Oh, why? Now I'm getting lots of pea grit, which is coming, this fine grit, and look what it's coming down onto. Oh, good lord. That looks like a floor. It looks very like a floor. And this is an in situ burial. That's lying directly on top of it by the look of it. <laughs> Oh, that is good stuff. I'll tell you what... Blimey. We could be just inches away from finally getting evidence of a big Roman structure. And crucially, it's slap bang in the middle of our Praetorium plan. Back in the old rectory garden, Faye's getting really stuck in. Cool, this looks a bit different to yes. yesterday. You're well down. I am, 
Roman, but fantastically, we've got a huge, great big section of it's wall. It's a big Roman wall, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. And we were a bit worried yesterday about the sort of relative heights of all this. I mean, there's a, there's a surface very much higher than the Roman wall. You can see where artists put his trench, which is basically this line down in this section here. And I actually think that level there is where he was standing. <laughs> really? Yeah, which is why it's so compact. With footprints? Human, what size boots did he have? Come You're on, so come demanding. on. so demanding. I haven't put any <laughs> footprints in there. And it's also a very significant chunk of walling on the eastern side of what we think is one single enormous building. Faye's discovery of this massive Roman wall, previously dug by artists, is a really good sign. Maybe we can rely on our antiquarian after all. Meanwhile, there's breaking news from the graveyard. We've spent the last 36 hours poking around in this graveyard, trying to get permissions to dig it, getting permissions to dig it, then finding nothing but Roman rubble and a tumble of old bones. But at last, Phil, we've got something exciting, haven't we? We have got Artis's floor. Look, if you look down between that pair of legs, you can see a mosaic floor actually in situ. You're smiling, William. I'm really excited about this. If artists are right about this, he might be right about the Praetorium. Here we are. They took Jesus from the House of Caiaphas, esto Praetorium, to the Praetorium. In artists' day, he would have heard the word Praetorium when he went to church because that was the word used to describe them where Jesus was arraigned in front of Pontius Pilate. So he was tried in the Praetorium? In the Praetorium. But a, go on. I was going to say, this is so important to what we're trying to do. We've now got the floor. You can actually begin to see some sort of an alignment on the tessery. We might be able to actually say exactly what the alignment of that building was. Finally, our efforts in the graveyard are being rewarded. Raksha, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> this is fantastic. It looks a lot different than it did yesterday. It, it, it is. It's a lot, lot different. Rakshar's revealed a huge section of wall and a step foundation. The classic herringbone style shows that this is definitely Roman. People were a bit sceptical yesterday. I talked about finding this big herringbone wall and I, I suspect that people didn't quite believe me. <laughs> <laughs> this looks remarkably similar to what was found on the other side of the church in the 50s. Yes, I remember that. I've seen photographs. So. Yeah, it's on a similar line, and he found step foundations like this. This is a photo of those step foundations excavated at Castor in the 1950s. They're more than 100 metres away from our trench, but they're virtually identical to those found by Raksha. And as the last few hours of our dig at Castor tick by, the news just gets better and better. So what's the story of this trench then, Faye? Basically, we have a Roman building, and actually down there we've got a room with what looks like a hypercore system. We've actually got a two-level building. So what did they do? Fill it in or cover it up and then build something on top? Or they had stairs that took you up to another room. Ah, right, right, right. A building on two levels makes sense, because the Romans had to factor in the slope of a hill here in the old rectory garden and on the western side of the church. The massive Roman wall that Rakshar found at the western end of the graveyard, nearly two metres wide, was built to support a building possibly three storeys high. And at an extraordinary 110 metres in length, this is the largest Roman building Time Team has ever excavated. Time Team is 100% independent and funded by our incredible fans. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews, 3D models, masterclasses and more. Please join us on this exciting journey. We need more support to make more episodes. This is Withington in the Cotswolds, an area of outstanding beauty with a lot of rich farmland and some very classy houses. In Roman times, it seems to have been pretty much the same, because 200 years ago, ploughmen somewhere around here discovered a huge villa. Excavations revealed some exquisite mosaics, but no one was able to date the villa, and there's no record of exactly where it was. But that's just the beginning of our story. 200 metres below the villa field is this lovely little spring, and guess what? Roman mosaic and Roman tile 
have been found here and in this field over here. No one's dug here, but the two sites are too close together not to be connected. Could the big villa over there have had a huge complex of buildings down here? I think it could, but I'm more interested actually in the spring which is under the bush over there. This is called Withington by the Wall Well, which rather suggests it was you know, perhaps named in the Saxon period. And we know that Romans, when they come in, they often take over pre-existing sites like springs, which are religious interest, and put temples and turn them into their own religious sites. Temple? Well, maybe, but this is a very unusual location. It's very wet down here. There's a lot of water about. It's going to flood. I think it's much more likely that the main villa is further up the slope, but perhaps this is the predecessor, the early villa, which was then replaced by the later villa further up the slope. David, what about these bits of mosaic? Do they give us a clue? Well, these could belong to an early villa, um, but I think it's more likely a bathhouse. So we could have an elaborate bathhouse associated with a, with a villa, either down here or up there, or and perhaps we could have a swimming pool associated with an early villa. The, the, the important thing which I keep going back to is what is the relationship between what is happening down here and the really big villa up there? All right, if you were all gambling men, which I know that none of you are, what are you going to say this is? Temple. I'd like a temple. Early villa. Villa to all. <laughs> Early villa and bathhouse. Bathhouse, <laughs> villa, pool, temple, swimming pool. <laughs> we're not going to know till we start digging, yeah. are we? Well, Get I've going, got Phil! <laughs> No sooner has Phil got the turf off than mosaic pieces start appearing. Got our first one, look. Oh, Matt. nice. Tessera. Is that the top soil? Yeah, yeah. yeah. what a matter. It proves Roger wouldn't plant in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there's another one. Popping out all over the place. Yeah. The villa was excavated by an eminent antiquarian called Samuel Lysons, and that's the problem, really, because he seems to be more interested in chasing mosaics than he was in working out the extent of the villa. So our first job's going to have to be to find it. But, John, we've got these zonking great pylons here. Aren't they going to get in your way? It shouldn't be too much of a problem. Th these instruments are designed to filter out that sort of noise. There are so many tesserae, or pieces of mosaic, coming out in the lower field, that Phil's put the machine away to avoid any damage to the archaeology. In the in front of your spade, yes. that one? Yeah, another one there, nice one. That's loads, you found loads, and all I've done is the topsoil from there to there. I found about ten. Yeah, but what we want is to get them in a floor, man. <laughs> That's what we want. We've barely been going five hours. Phil says he's found something to bring me out in goose pimples. <laughs> what you got? Well, look, this is what we got. We got a mosaic. Look, there it is. Isn't that absolutely incredible? <laughs> and look, it goes right the way across there. It's still going there. Look, it's still going. Look, oh, there it goes, and you can see. So, there it is. Let's have a go, so we'll find it. <laughs> go on. On the other end of the tree. <laughs> There See, is. there it is. Blimey, O'Reilly. <laughs> it's still here. Two square metres already. Wow. I know. And, of course, it's going back in through there. Yeah. And the further it goes back in there, the better protected I think it's going to be. Because I think here, we're right on the edge of where it's been taken away by the ploughing. When we say a Roman mosaic, this is just white with the occasional bit of red in, isn't it? It's not, it's not pretty. Oh, come on, Tony. What do you mean it's not pretty? Look, it's a Roman mosaic. How often do you find a Roman mosaic just like that on day one? Very, very rarely. <laughs> Geophys, who've split into two teams, have a hunch there's also a villa down here by the river. Their first magnetic results told us where to dig. Now, by using resistance, they should be able to pinpoint the walls and the outline of any building that may be here. Our first trench in the upper field has delivered good archaeology, but we can't begin any evaluation work on the scheduled villa until we're sure that we found it. Bridge, where are we? <laughs> we're on a Roman wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can see it's completely running off in that direction, and we've got two faces, one running up here and one on this side here. It's measuring about 50 centimetres across. But the problem is, what's going on on either side of it. We've got this really dense material here. We've got various things coming out of it, compacted material. Look, 
We've got here tesserae coming up. Mm. And we've also got a few bits of this greenware oh, yeah. Roman pottery. Oh, look. Even licenses beer bottle. <laughs> I don't think that's Roman. <laughs> By the end of our first day, we found more archaeology than we often see in three days. There's even a second mosaic up the other end of Phil's trench. The problem, as always, is understanding what's going on. What we've actually got at this end of the trench, I think we're outside the building, and you can see we've got the collapsed roof, which has come sliding down out here. Here's the main uh, back wall or front wall of the building. This we now know is a corridor going through, so your straight edge becomes part of the next wall, which has been robbed out. Ah. And now inside here, we've got the main rooms of the building with a collapsed mosaic. Where's the mosaic, Matt? We've got one piece there, that bit there, and that long piece going across there. So it's quite extensive, isn't yeah. it? So what are we going to do here tomorrow? Well, we've got John's new geophysics. This has got the resistance on it, hasn't it? Yeah, and I think what's exciting about the results is when we'd only got the magnetic, we thought we might have just a simple, maybe three-roomed villa. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the resistance, it clearly shows that the rooms extend in this direction. It's much bigger and more complex yeah. than we thought. So we're going to do a bit more with this area tomorrow and then target a trench somewhere in the middle there. Mm. Probably a 10 by 10, something like that. And um, what about our villa up there? Well, the big news, Tony, is we've actually found Licenses Villa, but the problem is we don't actually know where we are in it. So we're going to get a trench across it tomorrow. Let's work out where we are on his plan. The Romans were renowned for their water engineering. It seems odd to go to such trouble to bring fresh running water down to these buildings from a spring further up the valley when the river was so close. In the lower field, our Roman experts might have the answer. They've been looking at the finds from this trench and they're now convinced that the building was a bathhouse. A basic Roman bathhouse had three rooms. A warm room, a hot room to sweat out your dirt and a cold plunge pool to cool off. They think we're digging in the hot room. Oh, come on, how can you tell that from one trench? Because it's got distinctive types of tile, including this one, which is a voussoir, which is the, uh, one of the box tiles forming the vault in the ceiling. So you literally get a tube of, of, Correct. of, of, of boxes going yes. around Allow the wall? Allowing the hot air to circulate up the walls and around the ceiling. So this, this sort of odd shape is, is deliberate? Oh, yes. That is incredible. So that's it? And we've even got a bit of the vault. This is a tufa, nice light limestone, so you can get the whole of the stone vault, but half the weight. God, so you is. get a really good stone vault instead of a wooden roof, which would rot in a hot, steamy room. So is this the vaulted sort of roof that has caused our mosaic to collapse in? Highly likely, yeah. And presumably it all belongs to the fourth century. That's what the coins are saying anyway. But does it? Mm -hmm. Because I've got a piece of box tile here from the from a wall box tile, which is which has roller stamp decoration and is almost certainly first or second century, implying therefore that we may have an earlier bathhouse on the site. So this decoration is literally put on with a roller. Correct. You get a piece of clay and you as you opposed imprint. to a, as opposed to a comb decoration, freehand comb decoration. Hey, this is really good, isn't it? Really, because it looks as though we've got not one bathhouse. But bath two bathhouses. Yes. I need to get my head round this. David and Richard are saying that we've got two phases of bathhouse here 300 years apart. And as this might be a hot room, could there possibly be a hypercaust, an underfloor heating system, right here under the rubble? This is all made up ground. Blue stone. I think what they've done is they've dug a slot into sure. the side of the hill to take the stone away. Yeah. And that's what John was seeing on the geophysics. The thing of it is, it's not all doom and gloom because we do actually have some preserved Roman archaeology in here. Oh, I yeah. mean, we've got tasserie in there, look. Got it. And animal bone. So I think what's happened is that, that literally this quarry has chopped away all the Roman archaeology. Last night, we wanted to close down the lower field. We've solved Roger's molehill mystery. We're convinced it's a Roman bathhouse, complete with collapsed mosaic floors. Now we can see how the rooms of the Roman bathhouse related to each other in this lower field. Next door to the plunge pool, Matt's beginning to uncover what we suspected all along. David, 
There was a hypercost here, an underfloor heating system. So this must be the hot room. The in situ bit of the bathhouse, pop down there. Look at this. Oh, definitely. That's there, the peely for the yep. for the floor. The stack here still in situ. Stacks of tiles called peely supported the mosaic floor, allowing hot air to circulate underneath and through flues in the walls. We've got some, what, one, two, three, four, five, six at five, least. Five, yeah, and they're still six going down as well. At least. Yep, getting down there, and, and there's and rubble and stuff. No sign of the floor yet? Well, we've got bits of this. That's the lapsed floor, that's yeah. That's the floor. We've yeah, got a bit of boussoir here. Yep, but the bottom of this, I can't see how deep it, how far down it is actually going. Bits of Tessa are coming out yep. all over the place. You may find another stack somewhere they're here. Right, so close. Yeah, well, they're sometimes separated by roughly 30 centimetres. That's good. Lovely. Good. Thanks. At last, it's coming good in the upper field. After all the hours of geophys and collective head scratching, they've stumbled on the remains of a mosaic, and alongside is the decisive clue. A mosaic has been lifted from here, and who else would have done that other than our old friend Samuel Lysons? This is the mosaic. You mean this is this? That's right. The problem we've had for two days is that we've been chasing Lysons. Was his rooms running in this direction, or were they going in that direction? So where would the Orpheus mosaic have been? That would have been under the grass at the far end of the trench in that direction. Well, it's been a struggle. Yes. Thank goodness I was able to chivvy you on, otherwise we might <laughs> never have worked it out. It's all down to you. <laughs> it's disappointing that we didn't find more of the Lysons villa that we assumed would be easy to locate. The quality of these mosaics alone tells us that this was an impressive 4th century villa occupied most probably by wealthy yeoman farmers, the early ancestors of England's medieval knights. Yesterday, back in the lower field, the experts thought that there were two bathhouses on the site, one earlier than the other, and today Matt's found the concrete evidence. We've got this huge chunk of open signinum concrete there. As you can see, it's got this lovely kind of curve on there. Do you know what, which part of the... I, oh, yeah, so I know exactly what this is. This is the first floor of this room, and it's part of the same phase as the concrete that you've got, on the concrete floor that predates the mosaic. Right, so this is the earliest, the earliest, this is the earliest first phase. And, and in this phase, I suspect the room was used, being used very much as part of the bathhouse, for the use of the bathhouse as a hot room, and the, that when the mosaic was put down, possibly the use of the room had changed somewhat. That there would have formed the base, the floor of the bath, and here is, here's the edge along there. That's the quarter round moulding, yes. This would have been totally waterproof. And at the bottom of the bath? Um, no, this is not in situ. This has been, this has been ripped out yes. and, and just dumped. But this, this isn't quite as fancy as a mosaic, though, is it? So it's well, a cheaper no, version, no, it's is it? Plain, but, yes, but it's waterproof, so it's, it's, it's vital. Yeah. Undeterred by failing to find a spring head, John's at it again. Hey. <laughs> 25 past five and still the geophysics Worth coming. waiting for, though. Look sure, at this. Look We've at got that. a whole landscape now magnetically. Here's the scheduled villa, a series of prehistoric enclosures surrounding it. Then we've got this avenue that we saw yesterday, and that appears to connect the two fields with the possible shrine down here we still don't really know. Yeah. And then in this field, sort of bathhouse fields, yeah. as we've been calling it, look at the resistance results. There's the stream, there's the stream, <laughs> just right. orientate. Mm -hmm. There's the plunge pool, there's the trench with the mosaic. Look, we've got a whole new range. Corridors, rooms, absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. And basically, it extends up the hillside there. And Crikey. even more exciting, look at the scale. It's actually larger than the scheduled villa up there. So, right. is it another villa? It looks like it, doesn't it? It's got to be. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, there would have been many more people living in this landscape. Based on our finds, it looks as if a modest range of farm buildings, including a bathhouse, was in use by the river just after the Roman occupation in 43 AD. This settlement grew into a larger and more affluent complex with its own piped running water, but it would have been vulnerable to flooding, 
So perhaps it was the same family that built the villa that Lysons discovered, further up the hill, on the site of some other prehistoric farm buildings. This later villa almost eluded us, but no one could have predicted the quality and the significance of the other discoveries we made. We came here because of a handful of tesserae in this field, but we found this amazing bathhouse. Once Romans would have sat among these beautiful mosaics, sweating, then they would have sprinted over to Phil's plunge pool to cool off and exchange the gossip of the day. But this being time team, in the last few minutes, we've been handed this. It's geophys of yet another villa up on this slope here. It's bigger than Lysons' original discovery and part of a huge Roman complex. Time Team is 100% independent and funded by our incredible fans. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews, 3D models, masterclasses and more. Please join us on this exciting journey. We need more support to make more episodes. Have a look at this drawing. See the detail in that rose pattern there? Classic evidence of a Roman villa. But that's not all. Experts think there could be even better mosaics still down there, although there's a very good reason why they haven't tried to look. For the last hundred years, this whole area has been an army firing range. What we've done is we've re-surveyed a small area and, I mean, the results are just so clearly. It just has to be villa building. All the wall lines, corridors, rooms, a whole mass of responses. How deep down do you reckon this stuff is? I think it's pretty shallow, probably not more than, you know, half a metre. The geophys hints at dozens of rooms, any of which could hold the mosaics. But one spot in the corner looks particularly promising. So, in goes Trench One. <laughs> and, oh, look, someone's happy. And almost immediately, Phil and Neil find something rather special. Oh, no, then. What's in Oh, well, even you know what that is, yeah, Phil. I do. That's part of a mosaic floor. That was quick. Tiny bits of stone like these are called tesserae. The building blocks of a mosaic. Let's hope that's a good omen of things to come. Oh! Oh! <laughs> wow! Well, it's not bad, is it, for the first... <laughs> the first bit of the first trench? We've got a tesserae and we've got a coin. Do you know, there's only 12 coins recorded from this site so far from the antiquarian, so lucky 13. <laughs> <laughs> so our second trench goes in just a few metres away from our first to see if we've got a high-status room in the middle of the villa with one of the mosaics in it. And bang on target, guess what we find? Woohoo! Tracy, there are excited whispers from the other trench that you've found a little bit of mosaic. We have, Tony, yeah. I mean, you can see we've got a little bit in here and then a bit beyond where Rapshaw's working. A little bit of a mosaic. Come on, Tony, it's carrying on underneath here, so I think we're going to have to extend the trench back this way. There's a gap in the middle there. Do you think you've accidentally hit it? No, we didn't hit it. Um, it's most probably plough damage. If you actually look at the section, we're not that far from the top mm. at all. So John's looking pretty pleased with his geophysics. Although it's still very muddy, this must be one of the mosaics we've been asked to look for. This is a smaller room here with this mosaic in. The division between the rooms should be about here in this train. And like buses, you wait for ages in the cold for one mosaic... Whoa! ..and two come along at once. Imagine all the hundreds of posh sandal feet that must have walked over that. Yeah, and not just the posh guys, because there's a whole army of slaves and servants that were needed to keep a house of this style and status running. I mean, there are some Latin authors that talk about a group of, called the Burgundi, which are a band of sort of runaway slaves and brigands, roaming around Britain and Gaul, ransacking and just nicking things. So actually, in, in rubble and burning, we're seeing the last days of Rome in Britain. Absolutely. It's really about the end of the Roman way of life, which is funded by the Roman economy. 
As the day draws to an end, the sun and the colour in the mosaics are starting to shine through. Sadly, they've deteriorated since they were last seen 150 years ago, probably from ploughing. But at least we've ensured that they'll be protected in future. Is this one room or two rooms or what? Yes, it's both. <laughs> it's what's called a bipartite room. Two rooms that operate as one. You've got, like, your entrance hall almost with this lovely mosaic that's really sort of vibrant with its colours now that it's been sponged down. Then you can see here that we've got this semicircular footing. Yeah. What we might have here is like half column actually attached to the wall, rising up with a nice big decorative capital, in which case we're looking at a grand double doorway through the steps into here, or it's the pedestal base for a statue. Either way, we're looking at a very, very grand room. What would the walls have been like? Almost certainly richly decorated, painted wall plaster. But of course we haven't found much here because this has already been cleared out by Moncton in the 1860s. And that's not all. Curiously, we appear to have post holes driven into the mosaic floor. This act of vandalism is perhaps more evidence that life here struggled on after the end of Roman Britain. Over the past three days, we've unearthed a villa which mirrors the rise and fall of Roman Britain. A modest house which ended up with pretensions of grandeur. In its heyday, cheap blue and white lias mosaic corridors would have led into a large summer dining room. With our two mosaic floors and on a fine day, views across the valley beyond. On the dining room table, perhaps the fake silver spoons we found. All in all, dare we say it, just a little bit chav. Home to a minor aristocrat, his or her family, and of course keeping the whole thing going in the background, servants and slaves. But the good times weren't to last. It struggled on into the fifth century, but the villa, along with Roman Britain, was past its sell-by date. Hello, my name's John Gator. Time Team is fan-funded by Patreon. This vital support helps us to make new episodes. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews 3D models and masterclasses, plus lots more.